Hi, this is Quaid, and you're listening to the Garrett Smith Podcast. Hi, I'm Jared Flushy, and we're here. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That one got me, boys. He's so professional. <laughs> All right. <laughs> what's up everybody welcome to the podcast and in a way this is the family guy simpsons crossover with the quay <laughs> things podcast um it's what the, the yeah, world doesn't deserve it but it needs it episode <laughs> um, sorry that's we, my intro we are on i think your episode was hacking and coughing for five minutes <laughs> oh uh, my last ep- my last episode dude i uh yeah i uh I got God on that one too. <laughs> what happened? A uh, little, little bit of a respiratory overload. Ah! Did you drop a lung? Oh, I, I thought I did, dude. Did you do a steamroller? I, I thought I was gonna have a lungular prolapse or something, dude. You ever had a steamroller? No. Uh, uh, allegedly, uh, it was allegedly a, a joint. All I can hear allegedly. is letter kid. Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> See, a- friends of mine have done it before, and you lay out four little dab circles, and uh, they they heat up that pen. You know, it looks like they're really doing some, some crazy stuff. Mm-hmm. And allegedly, you hit all four of those at once, and it just, you die. So. Allegedly. I believe it. That's what I heard. It's a sick ostrich. How many? <laughs> <laughs> You, you've had three different types of, of marijuana products in, in in at least a minute. <laughs> I I I'm a I'm a you medical the patient room. on the state of Oklahoma. I'm legally allowed to uh, oh my god just consume and uh, possess <laughs> marijuana while I'm up here, and I'm up here. I'd like to make a disclaimer that if you catch a secondhand high from listening to this podcast in whatever state you live in. It's me. The, it's totally me. The man at fault lives in a legal state. Second law. Yeah, that's, I live in a legal Maybe. state now. Um, right. But, uh, is, but I love is it. any of that that uh, can, the Code of Canada stuff was a boys from Oklahoma? Yeah, I worked for them for a little while, man. That was a pretty slick gig. Uh, I'm Where's with a that? Company now. Is that the one that was in Mustang or Yukon? Yeah, that was the their operations in Yukon. I'm working in the city now. I'm with a I'm with a different company. We're actually the largest indoor grow in the state. Uh, what? what? <laughs> pretty cool dude uh we've got a little despo too and that's where i work man i just saw uh my buddy my buddy chad came up and he showed me his car of what you guys can possess on you at a time and stuff yeah i can have i can i can buy up to like i can have up to like three ounces on my person i can have like just reading the car was ridiculous <laughs> i can have i can have like six plants in flower i can have six plants that aren't in flower like i can essentially have them set up and and uh yeah you know unison getting ready to go which is cool uh (laughs) anyway garrett tell tell me some stuff man yeah uh i'm gonna have you tell us some stuff man so um your music career let's just say it's a little further along than mine you've seen some places man um (sighs) yeah so i i always start off these episodes bathrooms dude yeah (laughs) I think Sonny Sweeney posted a thing bathrooms. of like, what's it really like to tour with a band? It was like a picture of every convenience store bathroom in Texas. Um, oh, yeah, we've blown them all up. <laughs> well, um, I, I kind of give a background all the time of how I've uh, discovered or met the guests on my show here. But um, uh, I'll, I'm actually going to start off with Quaid because I was listening to his podcast long before I even started doing one myself. And I, I was like, I'm not... I'm not going to do this. I I don't I don't even like to hear myself sing, much less talk. So uh, AJ Gale was like, "No, dude, you, it, we're in, we're in quarantine. What else are you going to do? Just start a podcast." And so here we cool. here we are on episode 31. And I like AJ, um, man. yeah, he's hilarious. Uh, I, part of it when I listened to the Barf Crow revelation on Quaid's podcast, I was so happy because it, a lot of people thought it was Quaid. A lot of people thought it was me. I'm like, dude, I don't know who the heck it okay, is. Okay, can and, we be honest? Yeah, first of all, that's funnier than you. Than you. <laughs> Just tell them it really was you. Come on, man. Come out. With the I, truth. A, I Dude, wish I, I could I, take I credit. It was Alaman. Like I like I cornered him and was like, Caleb, like you have to <laughs> tell me it's you. He's like, Dude, it's not me. <laughs> Caleb? No, uh, Caleb Alaman. <laughs> yeah, Caleb. 
It scared me to the, death, though, when yeah, he started talking about how they actually yeah, discovered it. who it was. It's Charlie it's, Staff. Yeah, but like but before I knew who it was, like like before like before the podcast. Uh, before that, none, none of anything. what you none of what you guys thought was true is real. <laughs> Well, yeah, there's like still thoughtful. some guy out there trying to claim it. <laughs> like he got on my SoundCloud and was who like, does the, "Who does yeah, the Spotify who releases? releases?" I don't know. It's weird. They're out it, there. They're out there. I, well, I let the uh, the actual barf uh, barf on my music for that podcast episode. So we started off with a spoof of my music video that he got a hold of. But um, yeah, so all that to say, it's like okay. Well, now now we both got to have that guy on here. Now we've got one and only Jared Flushy on here. Um, and there's Jared, two Jared Flushies. There's two Jared Flushies. So there, it's not of. the one and only. <laughs> there's another, there's two other Garrett Smiths out there. So I'm kind of like I'm just trying to take off before they do. You know, it's it's kind of <laughs> scary. What do, they do? do you know what they do? Uh, dorm room acoustic originals, I believe. <laughs> yes. Didn't sound bad to his credit. That's where um, it all starts, man. Good on him. Man. Well, I just, this one's kind of baffling. I don't know where I started following Jared. I think I just I started seeing you pop up with a bunch of different groups, and then uh, I think whenever Dolly Shine stuff started kicking up last year, or year before, I, m- I remember uh, seeing a bunch of stuff there. And you know, on on our scene, everybody knows somebody who knows somebody, and um, yeah. one thing led to another. We're we're Facebook bros, so uh, <laughs> here here we are. Um, but yeah, like, what have you been up to? Because I mentioned earlier the whole quarantine thing and projects that come out of that. You know, like what what all have you been involved with from March till now? Oh man, uh, a whole bunch, man. I have, I have several people over here. I'm in the studio right now. This is this is the control room. Uh, yeah, I've had some folks over here. Uh, we've had a, a few Dolly Shine reunions get planned and canceled and. <laughs> Um, uh, man, I don't know. Just hanging out here at the house mostly. <laughs> that's that's awesome. Like everybody else. I had another guest on here who used to be in Dolly Shine, and I didn't even know it till he was on the episode. But uh, uh, John Signs from Flatland. Oh yeah, the man. Yeah, yeah. He's like, I was in Dolly Shine. I was like, dude, how many people have been in that band? <laughs> I didn't even know he was in the Dolly in the, yeah. in the Dolly Shine band. <laughs> yeah, he was. He's like, yeah, I'm like one of the hundred bass players who's been there. <laughs> oh yeah, dude. Yeah, we we had a slew of uh, of boys who like to slap in the bass. <laughs> who was have... who was your favorite uh, bass pl- bass member to play with in Dolly Shine? I'm going to ask you your favorite member was because that's hard. But who's your favorite to play with? Oh, uh, you know that old Desant boy. He's a good boy. <laughs> it, it was nice oh, to look over at his, at his cute little face, see him smiling. But I just everybody got Dairy Queen delivered to me, man. Dude, I saw hey, that. <laughs> that's slick, son. Legit. Y'all, I actually, 10 minutes before setting all of my equipment up for this, had an Omaha steak. No lie. Omaha? Yeah. Omaha. Omaha. <laughs> One time I was in I, Omaha, I, uh, and we were, we were on the corner, and we were all standing there, and when this guy comes up to us, and we're like, where are we? Because we, you know, we didn't know where we were. We just got off the bus, and we are half asleep, and half you know stone and uh we're like where are we he's like oh my ha that's literally how he talked and it was the greatest thing and he, i think he even worked at the venue and it was an awesome time that <laughs> introduction <laughs> to that story sounded like axel rose's st louis welcome to the jungle rant <laughs> like, we didn't know where we were oh well so I'm assuming you didn't just wake up one day and you were touring with all these groups, you know, like take, take us through like how you got started with music, man, like early influences and kind of what brought you along the way. Man, I've been playing guitar since I was 12 and I'm 32 now. Nice. Uh, so I played in a bunch of, a bunch of bands. Some of them are good. A lot of them are not good. Uh, <laughs> uh, you'll, you'll have that sometimes. So, you know, you'll have that on a big job, man. And uh, <laughs> I do I say that all the time at work. <laughs> <laughs> um, shoot, guys. Hey, man, back to that Dolly Shine question. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, it's a toss up. I can't, I can't, I can't leave out Hussy, man. It was, it was fun to play live with that guy. I got to with a different Ben Hussy who liked to party. <laughs> 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 people know now, and I, you know, I'm not gonna say I don't miss that guy. <laughs> Right. <laughs> no, but man, I've been playing guitar since I was twelve, and uh, I started playing in bands back then, and I played a lot of pop punk and 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 stuff when I was rebelling against country. Uh, that's what I've grown up around in St. Joe, Texas. It's pretty country out here. 
Rednecks um, with paychecks, baby. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's 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 part of my family's land too. You know, we, nice. we, uh, we lease out a little bit of our land for uh, for their camping. So um, definitely rednecks with paychecks out here. And um, yeah, I, I started playing country music um, probably around like 2007 with some guys from uh, the Munster area, um, and uh, just just kind of got obsessed with playing country guitar mixed with rock and roll guitar and and uh yeah awesome just got yeah, out from there i'm gonna run down a quick list i got here um some people call it stock i call it doing research for the podcast but for anyone <laughs> listening that doesn't know uh Flushy's played with Brilliant angel sam riggs randall king co wetzel dolly shine and probably a lot of people i'm leaving off that's pretty good man yep hell yeah <laughs> I'm trying to remember who I saw you with first, dude. Yeah. I know it wasn't it wasn't Dolly Shine. I, did, I think you said you you were playing with somebody else. You, I know I'm, I'm pretty sure I met you at Blue Light Floosh. Had to. I mean, that's that's just. Well, just you lived, right? There. You lived. Do what? You lived there, so. Yeah, for for about eight years, I lived at that bar. In uh, Narnia. <laughs> uh, I didn't live in Narnia. I had a guest <laughs> room there, though. <laughs> We all um, did. Quay, did you go to no, Tech? I, uh, I can't remember who I saw you play with, man. I know I've seen you play with Dolly Shine. Though. Shut up. My did you go to that. Tech? Uh huh. Did you go to Tech? Uh, I did. I did not graduate, uh, but I did go to Tech. Well, the awesome. greatest ones don't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I figured it was a lot better to get a job and make money and drink beer than it was to be in debt. <clears throat> and uh, I don't have college debt, which is great. Nice. Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't, which is, I mean, but I also don't have a college education. So, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's that, there's that, uh, there's I that. Part of one. Yeah. Uh, Flush, where'd you go? I went to UNT for a little while. Nice. But that was way too big for a little country boy like me. <laughs> I could not do DFW. Granted, I lived in Houston for three years, but it was kind of like a have to situation. And Absolutely. as soon as I was able to get back to central Texas, I like, dude, I'm out of here. <laughs> like, where are you at? Uh, Temple. Okay. Yep. Cool. Ha halfway between man. everything. Yeah. You went to school at uh, uh, A&M, right? Yeah, I did my master's. So I did undergrad at UMHB in Belton and uh, back when a redneck was allowed to go there. And then uh, left there, did grad school at A&M. <laughs> I went to jail in Belton once. Nice. <laughs> okay, I, you got to tell that story. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll trade you jail stories. <laughs> I got arrested because I had weed. Uh, <laughs> you might have met might have met some of my friends on the athletic teams at UMHB. I didn't there. meet anybody <laughs> in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it was the off season, maybe a road game. <laughs> yeah, I sure I saw them, but I didn't meet them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Original songs, you know. What do you do? You put anything out? Are you planning to put anything out soon? Or oh man, I put out two records this year. I was thinking you'd put some stuff out recently. I was like, I don't want to misspeak and say it was like more than one project, but yeah, Absolutely. tell us about yeah, it. Yeah, man. I put out two records of my own material this year. It's all on Spotify, iTunes, and all that. Um, one of them is a full band record, and the other is just um, me and an acoustic guitar. Nice. But uh, yeah, man, I'm pretty proud of the songs. Uh, there, there's some songs I've been sitting on for a while. Um, some of them are really close to my heart. Some of them I made up probably the day of that I recorded them. So wow. uh, it's just kind of a mixture of things that I've been working on and things that I just wanted to, to get, you know, kind of jump started on, get, just get stuff released. Um, I've been sitting on stuff for a long time and I haven't released anything and I really regret not doing it sooner. Yeah. 2020 just <laughs> hasn't been the greatest <laughs> year, but Hey, honestly it is. It's probably better because people are sitting around listening to music. That's true. So maybe, uh, maybe that's contributed to a lot of the, all the spins that I've been getting, man. I, I feel pretty, um, thankful um and lucky for the just the the, the amount of listeners that i have so uh, thank y'all for listening if you're listening now you want us to spend one on the episode man and if you want to um, awesome do we have to listen to it nah <laughs> <laughs> awesome <laughs> no I, I always just like pause hit save you know th throw Perfect. it, a, Perfect. Throw it you can punch it in there yeah i'll make a note though which uh which one you want to throw in oh man you could probably play high cotton um that's a, that's a song about my grandparents um I like it. So, yeah, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and guess grandparents' cotton farm background. Absolutely, uh, they picked cotton. 
Um, nice. That's they met. They met picking cotton um, just north of where I'm sitting right now. I am so, also 32 years old. My granddad was a cotton farmer in Childress, Texas, for most of his life. So can relate. Yeah, man. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. My grandparents didn't own the farm, but you know they were there. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Someone's got to keep it up. Texas dirt Picking in the fields Till our hands did hurt I got Oklahoma blood You opened up my heart And here come a flood Years go by Time don't hide I still stand by your side Like we're high cop Daddy left you and your mama with quite a burden You and your siblings on your back you grew up quick and you got a lot of learning When your daddy died in a heart wreck, heart attack Everybody said I was wild and crazy They're probably right We lived in New York and California and If you want to go and we'll leave here tonight Time don't hide yeah, I still stand by your side Like we're high cops Make it through the rubble As the years go by The time don't hide I still stand by your side Like we're high cotton Like we're high cotton Uh, let's see. I closed out my window and I cannot talk without a script and without sounding inept. Let's see. All right. <laughs> so of all your songs, which ones would you say mean the most to you? Oh man. Well, obviously high cotton is pretty yeah. special. Uh, <laughs> uh, up and down is about me and my wife. So that one's pretty special to me. And, uh, for the podcast listeners who don't see the screen, his wife brought him Dairy Queen, so you know she's a special lady. She's amazing. Um, yeah, she's guiding light, but um, yeah. So that one's that one's in there, and then Hellbound in a Hurry is a song to my son. So it's uh, those are songs that are special to me, but they're all special to me. They're all my babies. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah you, you post uh, you post some pretty fun pictures with you and your kid. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, he, he's awesome. He's he's uh, he's the best thing that ever happened to me. So. I love, it. I love it. So if you could make a music video to any song, what what would it be? Dude, I always thought about trash talk because just you know because it's about such skanky people. And <laughs> <laughs> I just think it'd be fun, <laughs> but uh, to have some like old dude and like an old caddy like driving around the Red River. 
not even relevant to the story. Just, just, just have some dude and he's just saying trash talk. <laughs> <That'd be laughs> like, awesome. Like going to the corner store and like gossiping with his buddies about. That made me laugh. Uh, Quaid, I'm pretty sure you're the one that posted it. The thing on Facebook was like, stop naming your kids London and Paris when they look more like Roswell and Jimmy Jimmy. Roswell. <laughs> I laughed yeah, so hard when I saw insert that. Yeah, whatever town you but yeah, dude, that's... Uh, as, pretty as, a, as, as a born New Mexican, dude, that, that's it's hard. Dude, New Mexico uh, is dangerous. Dude, I didn't, grow, I didn't grow up very far from Roswell. Uh, so it's <laughs> like, I, I, know, I, I know exactly what that's pictured, and I've got a got a little brother and two nieces and a uh, sister-in-law that live in Deming. So I'm pretty familiar <laughs> with both places. I've been I don't know, that was pretty funny. I don't, I don't, I think I stole that from a, uh, oh, I don't know. I'm a fan. I'm a part of a couple of New Mexico meme pages. I think they're pretty, they're pretty I love, funny. I love New Mexico, man. Albuquerque is such a cool town. Dude, Albuquerque is a great place to get stabbed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> in a hot air balloon. Great. Dude, so Dude, you're, I, uh, you're the uh, third New Mexico guy I've had on here. Well, guy, uh, Bree Bagwell's not a guy, yeah, but let's say Bree. You know I mean? Bree is from Las Cruz. Oh, <laughs> uh, she's one of the boys. Yeah, yeah. I. Uh, you know my I'm boy born, Anthony born Torres. I uh, I didn't live there. Uh, uh, on bass guitarist, College Station. Uh, he's a singer. He's out of. New I, Mexico. I know Lindsey Torres, but yeah, this guy's out of New Mexico. He's a singer songwriter. He came and recorded in the studio. It was pretty cool. That's awesome. Hell yeah. Yeah, I had a uh, Rob White, another bass player. Uh, he played. See, he's played for Worthington, plays for Jordan Nix, a few various bands, hops around. But that Very was cool. a another podcast crossover episode. Heck yeah! Oh, uh, yes, as well. Speaking of different towns and stuff, uh, best places to perform. You know, what have been some of the surprises? Dude, everywhere. Everywhere's the best town. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> I was I was I mean, waiting on. I don't know, but this town that's sucks. Be the general opinion when everybody gets back to gig and everybody's gonna be happy to have somebody. Hey go. God. Uh, right. <laughs> I'm back in my mom's house. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I pl- I played at a dive like when it was kind of like a dip where it's like okay we're opening everything back up and then we didn't know they're gonna like reclose everything. I played yeah. two shows during that period. I won't say what one of them was, but dude. I, they were not believers in the Rona. This dude brings out a jug. It looked like backwoods moonshine. And he so tries to stick it up to my face in the mic. I'm like, no, dude. And uh, they passed it around. The entire crowd drank from the same jug that night while I'm playing the song. And when I ended, I was like, dude, y'all are all getting the Rona or you're all <laughs> immune. I don't know which one it is. Yeah, it, it, the coronavirus doesn't exist in Monte County where I'm yeah. at. <laughs> dude, I... I believe the coronavirus exists, but here's my theory. Okay. It it has not attacked the stoners. <laughs> it has. There you go. I'm friends with most of them. <laughs> and uh, you're not here, and everybody passes around, you know, joints and pipes and blunts True. and this and that. We, it's, it's it's the jug theory that 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 Jared's got going there that you've got going there. You know, it's it's yeah. I. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. There's, there's some theory about with it, but uh, it hasn't got the that. stoners, even though we seem like we would be a susceptible crowd. Yeah, absolutely. Can't prove uh, it wrong. It's, it's crazy. You go to Denton, and uh, it's a completely different atmosphere than it is here. <laughs> they don't wear masks here. Nobody cares. There's a concert. Yeah, dude. I like. I, I have to wear one all day at work. Like while I'm in the building, I have to have one on. Sam Reeks came and played here a couple weeks ago. And there's like 1,200 people there. Yeah. Nobody had a mask on. I don't know. I didn't know. I could hear I think, it from my house. I think one of those first shows during kind of like that the Eye of the Storm time period was I think uh, I don't I don't know if Co played it or not, I like but I know that. a Geo and the Hired Guns Dude. played a show, and the picture was like a packed house. I mean, I heard oh, they got so oh, much yeah. flack for that. And so, I, I like that Steven place they were playing. Mm. I like that. I like that venue. Yeah, yeah. I went. I've seen seen a couple of shows at Cooks. That's where we did our podcast, Quade. Remember? Do what? That's where we did our podcast. It was the green room of Twisted J. Oh, yeah, nice. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, here's, here's a question. Reunion. Here's, yeah, here's a question. Was, okay. Best and worst green rooms you've ever been in? Ooh. Oh, man. The best one is floors. It's got to be. There's so oh, much, yeah. There's so much just history just sitting around. It has, like, Guy Clark posters and stuff. Oh, nice. I don't know about the worst. 
I've, I've anyone been, that doesn't have a, <laughs> a working toilet or <laughs> like a sink to take a shower in, I wouldn't say it was the worst, but it was like, you could add that. <laughs> I think uh best one for me was probably Redneck Country Club in Stafford. It's like right outside of Houston. I mean, it was like being in a luxury hotel. Yes. And then so they had like three different bathrooms, a whole dressing room, and then like a living room area to it. Yeah. And then uh Michael Berry, who's like a big TV or not TV radio personality down there, like owns the place. So he came in, he's like, drinks on me, you know, go to the bar. He's a moonshine get seller, right? Yeah, that guy with the cigars. Cigar guy. Yeah. And then uh Worst, I'd have to say, I, I'm going to go and say the place because I don't plan to get booked there again. But uh, Firehouse Saloon in Houston. That man. place has demons. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the door was falling off the outside. It's it was not a middle of winter. <laughs> it's, not, it's a shed. It was, it was a porta potty with some like, fence <laughs> material. I would, I would call that a gray room, sir. Yeah, I think, yeah, very gray. I'm pretty sure I've owed them <laughs> money every time I've played there. <laughs> I was like, I almost, I'm almost right. died or gone to jail every time. I play. <laughs> I've demons, bro. Yeah, there's like no nobody there, and, uh, but there's a vibe. <laughs> there's never anybody there, so the bands are all mad. And if you're the opening band, you're probably gonna get in a fight with the headliner. <laughs> oh yeah, well I I ran everybody off. Like I I was like the headliner for open mic. Like it was open mic and then my show. And I get up there, and you know, all these people sit around. And my mistake was, we started off with my song "Rev and Ride," which is like a heavy rock, like motorcycle rally song I wrote at the Republican Texas rally in Austin. And like everyone's eyes got, but man, they bolted. <laughs> it was like one, one table. No, it's like it's a legit like about cycling song. But everybody in there was just like, "Hell yeah, this ain't twang." We're out. <laughs> Did you have a bike? Nah. I'm not, I'm not on the Axl Rose level of riding it to the piano yet, but... You need to get a bike, dude. I need to. Dude, I... I had a Hardly for a little while. Nice. Dude, I've kicked around the idea of getting a motorcycle, but I snapped my leg rolling over a couch, so oh. like, I definitely don't need something that isn't... <laughs> yeah, but what else happened? Were you, like, fighting a group of men in a while? <laughs> no! Dude, dude, here's, here's the whole What's story. What's the context? Okay. okay, okay, all the dumb stuff I've done in my life. All, all the... Dumb things I have got out of, got my yeah. skin on my teeth. It's ten thirty on a Sunday morning at my mama's house. Okay, and I am just wrestling with my kid brother, just like boy push pull, whatever. And we literally just roll over the back of the couch, and I stick my leg out to catch us, and I don't catch us. We just fall on it, and that snaps under us. Oh no, that's awful. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I pick my leg up, and my foot, you know, instead of my toes being up like this, dude, they were. Like, my heel wasn't the, all the way, like, it wasn't turned all the way around, but it was, like, between 45 and 180, or 190 and 180, Man. like, right here. Jeez. Dude, I was like, my leg, you broke fucking leg. What the heck? And, uh, what's the, what's the honky-tonk? Dude, the and, and my mom, my mom was in the other room with my girlfriend, <laughs> yeah, and they both look at each other, and they're like, well, they both look at each other, and they're like, Quaid's just being a drama queen, you know? And Your leg is broken? <laughs> well, yeah, because they hear me screaming, oh, my leg, you broke my leg. I'm like, oh, he's just being dramatic. And so they they go into the living room, and I'm like, my leg's just dead fish over there. And then my, girl, my, my girlfriend goes, no, Brecca, he broke, broke it. <laughs> you need to get in here. Uh, yes, that's, that's how that happened. A uh, couple ligament splices, seven screws, a plate. Jeez. Ugh, later, a whole bunch of shit. Wait, cut it off. You should have just cut it off. Dang. That's gross. Hey, it That's dude, it got infected. They threatened, they threatened to cut that motherfucker off for a minute. I was like, dude, take it. I don't wow. want it. Um, no. But uh, I take the infection. <laughs> I'm glad I got the leg still. So I'm like one of those broke as a joke people that does not subscribe to these programs. So Zoom is saying, you have three minutes left on the free trial. I'm going to send you all another meeting link. Because I have my three like grand finale questions I throw at everybody. Um, yeah, but you have to put this in the podcast. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> so what I'll do is while we're taking a break, throw us another song we should play here. Oh yeah. See, hey, play Hitchhiking. By, Hitchhiking uh, by me. Yeah. But it's written by my friend Isaac Hoskins. Nice, ladies and gentlemen. Please enjoy the music while we do the broke man Zoom call. Come on, stand by. T 
ten days The sun burn holes in my boots With my thumb out in the rain Don't you ask me how I got here Don't you ask me how I came Cause I'll be singing these old hits And chocking blues up until my dying day Now I'll be hitchhiking, hitchhiking Hitchhiking, hitchhiking Hitchhiking, hitchhiking Hitchhiking, hitchhiking Car on the wrong side of Wichita Cut a man for a jug of wine Now he's swimming in the Arkansas And then waters is a running red boy My hands are squeaky clean Cause I got me a four inch blade says I'm gonna take that flatbed to Tennessee Now I'll be hitchhiking, hitchhiking Hitchhiking, hitchhiking, hitchhiking Hitchhiking, hitchhiking, hitchhiking I go back down to Texas I killed a Huntsville guard with his own gun on my way out the gate And I've been running from the Rangers since the day I turned 18 I shot two of them fools with the 38 on the south side of Abilene Now I'll be hitchhiking, 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 hitchhiking Hitchhiking, 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 hitchhiking are back in the meantime we were talking about the effects of getting blitzed and watching the brave little toaster um yeah uh, right. we have uh, I, I would say that's about a three out of ten recommendation there champ uh there's a few <laughs> intense it's a pretty moments, intense movie yeah uh, and it gets a little emotional I, I i don't know but me personally i'm a crier that's like a uh, so a, i would call that a movies like that from too high bad idea <laughs> yeah it's one of those little kid movies that, that i watch now and i'm like this is kind of up <laughs> like, it's kind of scary. Oh, like, yeah. it's, it's like, why did you let your children like homeward bound? Oh yeah, that's super. I cannot watch that. Oh man, my audio wasn't recording just now. Okay, now oh. we're back. Sorry, folks. We were just discussing the highs and lows of children's movies that we didn't know were demented when we were children. Yep. So, getting high and watching the Brave Little Toaster, saving Brave for Little later. Toaster, uh, <laughs> homeward Bound, Rock a Doodle. Oh, Rock a Doodle. Uh, yeah, dude, I yeah. forgot about that. Great Masketeer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Man. Um, so what was that? Dude, there's another cartoon I watched that was pretty fun. Uh, Secrets to Nim. That was kind of fucked up. Oh, yeah. Mouse Detect- what was it? Was it Mouse Detective? Oh, yeah. The Great Mouse Detective. Did you ever watch like- that? Yeah, Did all the time. Did anybody else watch Watership Super- Down when they were a child? Or was oh, that just dude. Ass? Where the rabbits, uh, like, ate each other to death? What about Texas Chainsaw Yeah, there's some weird. I mean. See that? Dude, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, before the remake came out, it was so annoying because there's a line in that movie about walking back to Childress or something. And so okay. people for years thought that this house south of Childress that belonged to our family is my great grandmother's house. They thought that was the house just because it was old and no one lived there anymore. And it was <laughs> two stories. Story, yeah. yeah. It was like seven miles out of town. And I'm like, dude, no, I would know if that was the house. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, when, I was, when I was a kid, my grandfather had this uh, Navy buddy that used to come visit him every now and then, and we went to the movie store, and he had let me pick whatever movie I wanted to watch, but he made me watch it. Well, it was Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I didn't know what it was. I was a kid. It scared the shit out of me, dude. Yeah. Oh, my dude, that, God. That ruined me. Like, I'm so weird. Weird. Was Jessica Biel? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. talking about, like, the original from the 70s. Yeah, yeah was, that one too. Jessica so, Biel, that I don't do scary. Those were the cool. I watch comedies and cartoons. What about the one with Matthew McConaughey in it? <laughs> Have right. you seen that one? There's one with Matthew like McConaughey. A, yeah, he's got like a robotic leg that he smashes <laughs> the dude's head with. <laughs> oh man, you need to see it. 
It's got yeah, Renee uh, Delwiger in it. So my wife has chlorophobia, like cannot do clowns, and they just put a life size Pennywise in our neighborhood in somebody's Ooh. yard, just like waving at people. I read like, it as a kid. My dad was uh, a truck driver, and uh, I remember reading that whole book in the bunk of his truck because I hated I hated being on the road so much. Uh, and then it's it became what I did. Yeah, I don't know. I, I never saw part two of that. I need to, I need to watch that one of these nights. Yeah, dude. I haven't seen it either. I went and saw the first uh, remake in um, the theaters with my wife, but uh, I haven't seen the newest one. I bet it's good. That book is really, really. Yeah, that's yeah. There's there's one scene they obviously did not put in the movie that yeah, somebody sent you, me the screenshot. I'm like, this was in there. <laughs> if that was in there, it, yeah, no way. You was that it. was that. Was that during the time when Stephen King was like so cooked out he doesn't remember? Sh- like, I know yeah. he doesn't remember. I would say I don't it. remember it too because it's yeah. a up part of the book, dude. I mean, yeah, I'm not even going to go down that road. <laughs> no. no. Anyway, on <laughs> speaking of artistic projects, um, what what are some of your plans for this coming year if COVID were to magically disappear? You know, like I I, I hate asking what's your upcoming plans in this time period because. I mean, I was going to release an album several months ago, and now it's looking like February. What are you doing, Quaid? Oh, me? I thought you were talking to Jared. Uh, man, I, uh, I'm going to try to get as many podcasts cut as I can, obviously. Um, I'm starting to get this Zoom shit down. Uh, I'm not very technologically advanced at all. Um, I'm, I'm terrible at technology. Uh, like I can set a timer on my phone. I can, I can send and accept calls and text messages um but like i don't even have wi-fi at my house that's why my service nice. has been sketchy like i don't have internet i have a television but like i don't have like direct tv or anything like that dude um but I'm jealous. Getting the technology <laughs> down so i'm uh i'm, I'm eventually going to start doing this with uh, these video podcasts like this or you know recording the audio as much as i can Ooh. um very cool. But uh, obviously, LJT <sighs> is is my is obviously always my next big move, dude. It doesn't matter if it's next week or if it's next year, you know. Uh, obviously, it's pushed back until April again. Uh, that has just broken my heart. Um, yeah. This is throwing my whole year off. Um, oh, absolutely, man. Uh, but we've uh, we've changed campsites this year. We're a little closer to the stage. I'm no longer in that cul-de-sac that I have been in for years. Um, so, but I'm not disclosing where I'm at on this because then everybody's going to bug me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just but, sure looking for you. Uh, I'll find you. No worries. Uh, but no, dude, I'm, uh, I'm probably going to do another ticket giveaway. Um, uh, if Very these cool. live shows get to kicking back up, dude, I've, uh, I've got an idea for essentially a different format of the podcast. Um, like if, if live shows get to kicking back up and I can get my time off here to align, then uh, I don't know, man. I'm looking to essentially try to get back on the road, dude, either TMing with somebody or uh, either like doing a podcast style where like I hop in the van with somebody for, Ooh, you know, nice. a weekend. You should and, be in the car with Bobby Texas, man. And, and you'll dude, I said, but see, I have a nine to five. Oh, well, you're, yeah. I'm, I feel eventually, that. I'm gonna have my own. <laughs> if you're with Bobby, if uh, with, you're with Bobby, you gotta be with me. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm. I'm pretty. I'm pretty vagrant, dude. But like, I'm not. I'm not that cool. Bobby likes. Bobby likes. Uh, Bobby Texas is the man. Everywhere uh, I go, to Bobby's but there. But no, man, just trying to get some podcasts done is is really the the plan. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been researching a bunch of different genetics with the company that I work for. You know, different strains. Yeah, Ooh. different strains of cannabis, and so I. Uh, that's really been a big interest for me recently, just like the science of like breeding the plants, um, oh, what you know, outcomes, different phenotypes. So I'm probably, I mean, probably gonna spend a little bit more time in the garden, but nice. uh, yeah, hopefully dude. trying to get back out on the road as much as I can, awesome. dude, I just and cut all the podcasts I can. LJT, we need to do like a live podcast broadcast at a campsite oh, with an audience talk show style absolutely get a couple artists out there just go to the front i'm page. terrified but i'm in <laughs> i get an interview with front row people just sneak some ice cream in man you'll be good i sit there and piss their pants and stuff <laughs> Cause Cause I, yeah dude it's we're, we're gonna have to start it at daylight because you know all the all the <laughs> take you a, it's gonna take you a month out. to do this yeah for sure 
I want to do something like I thought about going to Chili Fest with my own like event tent and doing a concert Ooh, within yeah. the concert. That's an awesome festival. Yeah. Oh, I, I take went, that last back. Time I do we, have uh, I do have something else planned. I have I have got to start training my liver for Larry Joe Taylor, dude. I have I have let it slip. I have not been my alcohol to- tolerance has gone to shit. Oh, that's good. For dude, me. like I drink, like I drink. I don't know. A pretty good amount of booze and was a lot more drunk than I should have been. But I mean, it was still a pretty good amount of booze. But like, it just, man, I am, I'm nowhere near LJT shape, dude. <laughs> good, I'm proud of you. I gotta start training. I don't like drinking anymore. I forgot to give a shout out to our sponsors for this episode. We want to thank the D.A.R.E. program. You guys helped us out a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah you're telling me everything I needed to know to get me started in my future career. <laughs> no, dude, I've just been This is what it looks bunch. like. This is what it's called. <laughs> Avoid it. I've just been right here. Sitting there recording. That's where I'm going to be. I've been playing live music with a guy named Isaac Hoskins. He's my buddy. I'm Dude, I've heard, I've really heard the name. I think I've met him before. He's put out a great record. He won the Blue, Rider, Blue Light Songwriter Contest thingy. This year? Uh, I think last year. Okay. I th- okay. I think I do know who he is then. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've been playing a couple of live shows with that guy. Um, I've, I've got several people in the studio that came by. This kid named Grant Wages. He's 17 from Nocona, right the town next to us. He's he was awesome. Had a girl named Lindsay Buchanan. She was cool. Had a band called Contraband Revenue. Nice. They're from Missouri. They came all the way down to record a single. They're cool. From where? Missouri. Oh hell yeah! Huh. Contraband revenue. I can I can at least get behind the band name. What kind of yeah. style of tunage are they, man? Rock Shoot, I need to get them on the they podcast said, now. They, they said do nasty, so we got nasty. They kept quoting like the best movies. Like Joe Dirt was quoted a million times while they were here. So nice. If you know, if anything, they they they'd, they'd be good to watch movies with. Right. <laughs> it's not gonna so, be. It's not gonna be the worst. At least you know they have good movie choices on the oh, bus. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm working on uh, my buddy Tom McElvain. He's a guy, he's uh, when I first started playing country music, he's one of the dudes that gave me a shot. And um, we actually did a record in the studio last year and we put it out. You should check that out on his Spotify. It's got some of the best songs I've recorded on. Um, Ed Porter Union's Steel Player in randomly just came in and and just threw down on five songs in like 30 minutes. It was was ridiculous. As quick as I could push record, he had a take. And they were all stiller. Uh, my buddy Chris Shane, he played in Statesboro Review for a long time. Oh, he wow. played drums on it. Oh, it's a great record. You should check it out. I, and, you know, I'm tooting my own oh, yeah. horn, but I really like his songs. Hey, so. that's what the podcast is about. <laughs> Toot whatever yeah. horn you want. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to, to Tom's new stuff. Uh, he wants to put out an acoustic record. and um, So we're going to start recording um, stuff with that. He just got picked up by a record label at, called SOL Records, and um, yeah, so we're, I'm excited to start start uh, some pre-pro on that in the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, just other than that, I'm playing Halloween with Isaac nice. in St. Joe at one of the venues oh, yeah. that lets you play shows. Dude, did you see that uh, Mike Jones is going to be in Durant on Who? Halloween? Mike, Mike. Mike Jones. <laughs> Who? I did see that. What there was some other uh, event that so was weird. I love like Bubba's. That's that's probably what I'm going to do for Halloween. Honestly, Bubba's is one of my favorite venues in the whole world. Did y'all see the the Dude, hometown the heroes the or whatever? It was like the greatest. Pat What's Green, that? Josh Abbott, and then like Snoop Dogg and Nelly. I think were on the. I forgot what I, I did. It yes, was screen, dude. Yeah. It was. <laughs> yeah, my, uh, my buddy that plays in vaudeville, uh, Jude. He he, uh, he he was. He, they played that show. And he, he was posting all these cool pictures. Snoop showing up and stuff. It was insane. That's awesome. Uh, so before I hit like my big three finale that I ask everybody on here, okay. um, I would say for anyone not following either of you yet, where's the best place to follow y'all? Uh, you can follow me. Huh? Not Twitter. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I hate Twitter. Twitter. I hate Twitter. I, I do too. Twitter. I just use it to. Talk, I just use it to talk shit <laughs> to my girlfriend mostly. You follow me on Twitter. <laughs> I don't. I don't post anything serious, but. Felucia's funnier than we are well, on Twitter. That's right. I try to be funny. Yeah, uh, in- Instagram would probably be the best follow for me, dude. Quite thanks podcast on Instagram. I think there's an underscore between all the words. I can't remember, but yeah. Uh, once you spell it out, dude, it pop. I pop up pretty easy. 
Uh, yeah, my I'm name's on, spelled weird, so. I'm on all those things, the Instagrams. And yeah, the, me too. Rock Soup Music Group, follow those, you know, if you could. Legit. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that you can, yeah, I'm, I'm with Smith Music. I know that you can find all my podcasts there. And uh, I should be They're just good. Uh, I'm on every other outlet that I know, like Stitcher or Stacker or whatever it's called. And I'm on the Spotify and the You're on a couple the, uh, the state. Dude. I'm on iHeartRadio, I think. I'm on a couple other ones. Hey, I'm trying to get on. I need, I need to make sure I'm on Napster if I'm not already. I found out the we need to bring that platform back because uh, the amount of plays that it, it takes to make a alive? dollar. Yeah, like it takes like 50 plays to make a US dollar on Napster where it takes like 250 on Spotify. Let's go to Napster. I mean, Napster's where it's at. <laughs> Thank you. Dare program and Napster, ladies and gentlemen. Hell yeah. <laughs> Making us all delinquents. I'm in for any platform that'll give me money. I don't care what. I'm, ba- I'm about to go the LimeWire route, man. Just get it all going. <laughs> Give give your computer an STD. <laughs> that's, that's the virus we should all be worried about. Right. The Rona. Why were we Lime all wire. worried about the Lime wire? Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Lime wire that's fire. Real Lyme disease. It's worse than the Raider rash from what I hear. Yeah. <laughs> so originally I was like, man, hey, these big the three. comes off after a while. I wouldn't know. The big three normally pertain to touring artists, but I'm realizing both of y'all could probably answer these pretty well. Uh, question number one: If you could collaborate musically with anyone out there, who would it be? Slipknot. Oh. A Slipknot and Texas country crossover would be amazing. Corey Taylor, man. Oh yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to do a, a like an old Southern rock album with Corey Taylor. He has a great. Hell movie. yeah. Well, Nikki Six put out a thing recently. It was like him slash uh, all of six a.m. and then Corey Taylor was on it, and Brantley Gilbert was on it. And I was like, how's this going to work? It was act- it actually was pretty good. It was a real thing? Yeah, it was a real thing. There's a video of it on YouTube. That oh. sounded great till you got to the end. That's a bad <laughs> joke. That's crazy. Yeah, it sounds like the start of a bad joke. Um, <laughs> I'd probably do another Dolly Shine thing. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a cool artist to collaborate with. <laughs> Dude, um, I don't know. I... I the favorite guest to have on the podcast, or just just like a dream person, uh, right now would probably be Tyler Mayhan Co. I'd really like to pick his brain. Oh, get up, and get I, I just got into both of his uh, podcasts. Yeah, dude, I want to I want to get stoned and and figure out what what that dude's into. I want to. I'm pick not his smart brain. enough to be around that guy. I'm afraid he would just <laughs> eat me alive. Well, I'm okay with that. I, I'm the ass end of most jokes. I, I want to hear some that. of his stories. He told he told some stories on Twitter. He was talking about his his dad like picked up a, a box full of rattlesnakes. Oh, he was even on the bus or something. He was like he was going to take have these rattlesnakes taken to his house to make shoes or boots out of or something. So they just put them on the tour bus underneath his <laughs> bunk. So like Dang. Yeah, above this bunk full of a box full of just rat- rattlesnakes. That was just one of the stories. You know, that guy's got a million crazy uh, stories that you probably can't hear. Yeah. I want to uh, hear, hear him. But, he would, <laughs> but him or, uh, uh, dude, I think, uh, uh, Sturgill Simpson would be a pretty interesting. Pick. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, know. I, I saw him uh, a year or two ago. And I was a little disappointed because he he did like three or four songs and then spent the entire rest of the hour just playing guitar. I'm like, hey, this is cool, but I was like, I know you can play guitar, but then, <laughs> but then like later he did that interview where he's like, yeah, I didn't, I just didn't feel it. I didn't want to be on tour from this time to this. I'm like, oh, that's when I saw him. So he just, he that was sucks. over it. He was over yeah, it. I saw, I saw, I saw that guy saw three times. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I was about to say, I saw him in Lubbock, and then I saw him with Willie in Dallas. I saw him in Windstar with Jason Isbell. Oh, oh nice. That was a pretty good one. Dude, Jason Isbell at Blue Light was still in my top five shows of all time. I saw him, and when when did you see him with Willie? Uh, Two years ago, it was the you know, Outlaws and Legends, or yeah. not Outlaws and Legends, Outlaws and whatever. Uh, uh, Bingham was on that show. Yeah. Cool. Edie Brickle and like else was on that show. All Lucas, Willie was, Lucas Nelson was on that show. Yeah, so I saw him when they came to Houston. Maybe it was just the okay. day I saw him. I don't know. <laughs> I know. He put on a great show. Uh, yeah, Billy Bob's. He killed it there, too. Ah, uh, dude. I need. I got tickets for the Panhandlers show at Billy Bob's. Now, okay, I take that back. Uh, if Let's any of the members of the Panhandlers see this before the Billy Bob's date, I've hit you guys up. I'm trying to get a podcast. What's up? <laughs> and and also y'all can cover my panhandle song because 
It's dope. Self plug. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I uh, I want to get I want to because I've had uh, John Bauman was my first episode. I yeah, like that guy. I played a couple shows with him last year. Dude, Bauman's awesome. I and saw then him at I, I, I had him on the podcast. Fun. We played uh, Rhymes and Minds last year. Dude, I'm I'm almost I'm getting to that point where like I'm almost low key enough to just finally like enjoy Rhymes and Minds. Oh yeah, that's when you're old. <laughs> I'm, I'm, that's when you know you're cool, I'm, dude. I'm starting to get old. If your rhymes and vines cool, you're cool. This is the perfect segue into question number two. Yes. If you if you could headline any venue, what would it be? Mm. Uh, <laughs> the rhyming. It's a nice break. So ninety percent of my guests on here say Green Hall or Red oh, Rocks. Green yeah. And I've, I've yeah, never been to Red Rocks. I would do Red Rocks too. I green. I mean, shit, Green Hole. I'll headline any of them. <laughs> Dude, I haven't been. I haven't been to Red Rocks, but I've I've been to all the other venues pretty much. I haven't been to Red Rocks either. I played Green Hall a few times. That was awesome. Never the, been to the Brian Minute. The further we get into not Dude. being able to open venues, the lamer this question gets. Because by the time stuff opens up, we're all just going to be like, "Yeah, I'll go play your sports bar during a bowl game. Let's do it." Yeah. <laughs> I won't. No, <laughs> I I played at a place here in Temple when A and M was playing Oklahoma State in that bowl game this year, and I'm sitting there like, dude, I am the most annoyed Aggie in this room because I do not give a crap. I'm just wanting to play my music. I don't need to play music that bad. I can't do it. I'm I'm do done sports booking sports bar. bars. I can't do it. I can't do it anymore. Man, I don't I don't even watch sports. I, even watch sports. <laughs> I like bars though. I don't know sports ball, so that pisses me off. <laughs> dude, dude, okay, my, my favorite thing, I do it to people all the time. Uh, you know, somebody will be trying to talk sports to me or will be mentioned in a team and, you know, say they're talking football, I'll be like, dude, I don't even watch basketball. Right. You know, or if they're talking basketball, well, I'll be like, dude, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't bowler. watch baseball. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, dude, I don't, I don't even know the rules to tennis, dude. When did you get here? <laughs> uh, it, it, piss, it pisses a lot of people off. I love it. All right. Grand finale here. Um, and considering you've played with Riggs and Co., I can't imagine how this question is going to go over. But uh, what is the funniest or craziest story you can tell from your music career? <laughs> I, don't, oh, I don't know. That you're able to tell. Funniest or craziest? Um, man. One time... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> One time, <laughs> Dolly Shine was on the road, and uh, we made a, a fake Facebook and like uh, for <laughs> for Caleb Alamon collab, and we made a Kevin. <laughs> and then we made a, a fake Craigslist, and we were like selling stuff, and <laughs> we put his Glock on there, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we made him drive us all the way up to Wyoming. And uh, we got a, a couple fights. Uh, ben Hussey got lost. He just ran off with some strangers. Uh, we got pizza. Um, we went to a bar that had a gun hole through the window or, or mirror or something, and they kept talking about people shooting people. And me and Miguel almost got beat up by this football player because we were looking for Ben, and we were like, hussy, hussy. And this guy literally pulls off the side of the road, and he goes, you're a fucking pussy. And we're like, no, we're looking for our friend. And he jumps out, and he's, he's the biggest dude I've ever seen in my entire life. And he goes, I'm about to curb stop your f- ass. <laughs> and me and McGinn are just like, uh, you know, we're just ready to throw down, I guess, and die. <laughs> and maybe both. Uh, and then I, I shit my pants. That was pretty fun. You'll have that's, that on the big jobs. <laughs> that, was a, that was a funny. That's awesome. <laughs> that was just one trip. Yeah. Because <laughs> at first I was like, is this a compilation? Is this one? No, voyage? that was one trip to Wyoming. That was like Ben's first week. Hell yeah. Christmas. That was Hussey's first weekend, I think, with us. We took him to Wyoming, and, and I just acted a fool the whole time. He disappeared. <laughs> Pretty sure I kissed him in the middle of the bar. In Wyoming. <laughs> that place is the Wild West, dude. There's like Canadian cowboys getting in fights. Coulter Wall, real. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they come in, who's the toughest guy in Letterkenny, but it's like real life. <laughs> Those Canadian cowboys are <laughs> crazy, dude. I was in there dude, once. Letterkenny is the <laughs> I love that show there, man. Uh, 10-4. Dude, I, 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 I've named my cats Jonesy and Riley. 
Is that I, I really think I want to have a I want to have like a additional member of my band whose job is to just talk like Shorzy in the crowd after every song. <laughs> I love that show. It's so funny. It reminds me of like a a redneck trailer park boy. So fun fact: right before the shutdown happened, uh, formed boy. kind of a super group of some songwriters from like Corpus yeah. in Houston. And the name of the band was Chasing Bonnie because all the guys in that group are like crushing hard on Camilla Kowal or however you say her name. Is that what you like about yeah. me? Yeah, that's what you like about me. Mm, Bonnie McMurray. Murray. <laughs> I like well, that big guy in the in the overalls. He's squirrely Dan. Squirrely Dan. <laughs> Allegedly. All right. Allegedly. <laughs> so if we could close this thing out with one of your jams. Which one would be? Which one? It's the end of the show. Concert's over. Which one's the last song? Oh man, what songs are mine again? <laughs> Shoot, man, I would have to say. Um, Every time I look at Quaid's screen, he's in a different room. <laughs> like I like look over here, and then I look back down. I'm like, where are you? <laughs> it's not even Quaid. He hired. Well, me. that's the benefit of being able to do this on my phone, dude. I like, <laughs> like my cup ran out of water. I got yeah, my water. I wanted a cigarette. Was taking a shit a shit like, I can move. <laughs> He was taking a dump while it was weird. No, I, I'm not. I'm not going to go to the bathroom. Or yeah, play Gold Mountain, man. Cause it's got some cool banjo. Oh, sweet! I'm all about it. All right. Well, dude, thank both of y'all for doing this. This is this is awesome. I've been wanting to get both of y'all on here at some point. Hey, thanks for having me, buddy. Dude, no yeah, worries. For sure. Yeah. Wait, uh, good to see you, man. Miss you. Dude, good to see you too. Uh, we don't live that that far apart. We need to find a way to hang out soon. I need to bring my kid to Oklahoma City because that's where my wife's mom lives. So uh, we need to drop drop him off sometime. We need to come over there. Okay. Hey, yeah, how far is me, dude? I'll, how far I'll, is UConn? Like, how how far is uh, UConn is forty five minutes from me. Yeah. So I'm like, this is a goal, not a plan. Um, I right now I'm putting together the new incarnation of my band to what are you really doing start <laughs> Well, I'm, it's a goal. I, I want to get up and do Grady's. At some point. Oh yeah, hell yeah, yeah. dude, do it. It's a, I went there the other day and watched uh, Shea Abishire. Well, it's, Hi, okay. I've complained about this too much on other episodes, but I'm just gonna do it again. Like I was getting my tickets to see Cross Rags and Young at Green Hall whenever the shutdown happened, and didn't get to do it. So soon as that opportunity comes up, I who knows if it's up there, I may have to go watch it. Do it, hell yeah, there you, there you. Well, holler at me, dude. I got a spare room. Sounds good. All right. All right, boys. Y'all be careful. Love y'all. You too. Take care. Well, you, man. Y'all be blessed. Take it easy. Right on. Catch you later.
with this man I guess losing her is something I couldn't afford I'm gonna figure it out one of these days I can run away if I can run away I don't want the burden I don't want to be the bearer of bad news You got some demons that you ain't getting away from Water under the bridge and these sins I ain't counting. Let them sort it.